everyone, it's Thomas, aka Brainfarts here, and so today, um, we're going. I'm going to be talking about one of my favorite things on Earth, uh, the traditional Latin Mass, and why I love it. So this is going to be uh, eleven reasons, actually twelve. I'm going to give you a bonus one. Why I like the why I love the traditional Latin Mass and completely support it. I think everyone should just go to it. So anyway. So so anyway, just a bit of a disclaimer here. This is not even a top my top ten reasons for why I go to Latin Mass. Um, I personally think, even theologically, the traditional Latin Mass is much better than the Post Vatican Who Novo Sordo Inc. Mass in English. Um, English, uh, but this is just gonna be things that I just noticed and picked up over over year, years going to it. So anyway. For anyone who's watching this who does not know what the traditional Latin Mass is, and um, in the 1960s and the 1970s, uh, the the Roman Catholic Church went under various reforms um, to make the Mass more 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 accessible uh, to the people. Uh, the end result was, I'm sorry to be blunt, crazy banality, um, and there are a lot of things that were Chuck that that referenced church history, uh, the roles of the priesthood in the Catholic faith, and it really just dumbed it down. It wasn't just a translation; it didn't just uh, translate it from English Latin to English or what French or whatever language. A lot of major prayers were cut out, um, and I do and, and I do think that a lot of it has actually been harmful. Um, over the years. So anyway, so this is going to be like eleven reasons why I um why I, I why I say think that the lat mass is better. Again, not even my top top eleven reasons, but just off the cuff. So number number eleven. Oh my gosh, oh, there's only one single liturgical year in uh, the traditional lat mass. The modern Catholic Church has a three-year cycle of readings. Um, while, and so, and while the while the traditional Latin Mass is only one, so I know some people are thinking, "Oh, this is great! You're going to lead a lot, a lot more scripture." Yeah, here's the issue. Um, I remember teaching Sunday school school in the Novo in the in the more modern Catholic Church, and yeah, yeah, they would. Um, they base their Sunday school curriculum off the Sunday school readings. So there's any important. So what would I find would happen is that uh, if there was an important reading, uh, the, oh, this is great. Uh, this is like ma very important for the kids to know about the faith. It would be just in the readings. A kid is sick. Kid has other things they have to go to. They miss it, and your next opportunity for dealing it with it is. Three years down the line, um, uh, assuming they're even there. Uh, so again, like I personally don't even think that so that Sunday school should even necessarily follow uh, a cycle of readings. Personally, um, for a liturgical year, I don't think it's a good idea. Personally, for various reasons, but but it is what it is, and that is a problem. And the, and the, and, the, and if it is and it is a problem. Um, so basically. They have more, it's more, you end up with the traditional Latin Mass more quality rather than quantity. Uh, so, so number 10. Um, yes, this has to do with Latin. Um, there are some things that by just by translating lating it from English, from Latin to English, you do miss out on. Uh, one of the words is the word the Latin Mass uses for mercy. It actually specifies the type of mercy God has for us. Misericordiae. Uh, basically, it me misericordia is a Latin term, uh, which basically means you're so forgiving of someone, you're forgiving someone so much, it's just plain wrong. It's mercy, it's mercy forgiveness. Point word is dangerous and sinful. That's the mercy God has for us. Um, um, has uh, has for us. So we're, at, so we're asking God to, to be merciful to us in the Latin Mass. We're praying for Him to be. Be so forgiving for us. It's plain, just plain. It's just plain dumb and wrong. So, an example of misericordia would be like, say, letting a bunch of terrorists or murderers out of prison, and inviting them over to coffee, the, the day after they killed they, they killed a family member. 
it was just stupid and plain and dumb and wrong. That's the mercy God gives to us. And that's mentioned in the Latin Mass. Um, and this, so the number, so number nine, this also has to do with something that's lost in translation, uh, even faithful ones. The original version of Latin Mass mentions gladiator fights. Yes, I'm not, no, I'm not joking. Um, so there's in English, in English, and there are Latin Mass missiles, Latin on one side, English on the other. It says, we offer you these gifts, these presents, these holy and spotted sacrifices. The word for presence in the Latin is menura, which is what they would call those festival, those festivals when they would have gladiatorial combats on honor of the dead. It means memorial. So, in the Latin, it actually has a tease of build up sacrificial language. What are these gifts, these quasi-human sacrifices things? And it just says sacrifice at the end. It's really have this. I know I'm not an expert land, but it's a nice build up. I really love. Uh, you lose that in translation, even faithful translations, because there's just no exact translation into English. Um, uh, number eight. The last word in the traditional Latin Mass is the gospel. Except on very rare occasions, like I think Easter is the only, Easter vigil is only, is like, I think it may be the only exception. I have to double check. But it's usually, uh, but it, but it usually ends with, with a, but the Latin Mass typically Latin Mass typically ends with a reading of the Gospel, typically the opening verses of the Gospel of St. John. It may be different depending on, the, on certain feast days, but the last word is given to God himself in Latin Mass. Um, also, uh, rather than say the priest gives the blessed, final blessing. Uh, number seven, the opening, the opening address of the, the opening address of the Latin Mass is not given to uh, the people, it's given to God himself. So, and the more modern Catholic Mass. Priest will go in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Today we celebrate, come hello everyone, welcome, good morning, welcome to Sunday's liturgy. Today we celebrate the feast of so and so, or the 14th Sunday in ordinary time. Um, in the traditional Latin Mass, the priest just goes up and says, and if it was translated in English, it would go like this. And the Father and the Son of the Ghost, I'll go into the altar of God, God will give joy to my youth, judgment of God and stimish cause, and nation as it holy, etc., etc. And they would recite an entire responsory of psalm at the beginning of Mass. And there's no com you know, people because, com conversation with people because it's not about us. The Mass is about God. Um, and that's something that I think people in this and age, with religion and everything, people are going after what pleases them. They're after is what suits me. With a lot of things. Uh, God has been kind of forgotten, even in our, ch in our churches. I think that's a problem. Uh, so that leads to number six. Uh, Adorantum is Christos, it's Christocentric. Uh, Adorantum means the way the Mass is celebrated. So it means the priest, when he celebrates the traditional Latin Mass, he doesn't face the congregation um, in the traditional Latin Mass because, well, when he's talking, he's not talking to the congregation, he's talking to God. And so he'll, there will be a crucifix right in front of the altar, and he'll face, everyone will face this, this crucifix in the tabernacle where the blessed sacrament is kept in reserve. And the priest will talk relatively to God, the people behind him, and they also trick talking him that way. And it's this is this is also a good thing in that it it means that the mass is not about Father so and so. It's about Jesus Christ, and that the priest ceases to be. It's he's, he's supposed to cease to be. He's the priest in the Catholic mass, theoretically, and this is even Novus Sordo, is supposed to like stop being him. He's supposed to be. He's acting in the person of Jesus Christ, and I find that's actually a helpful reminder, both for the priest and for the congregation. It's like, um, no matter what's been going on, Jesus comes first, and, and it's centered. And that's one of the things I like about, the, about um, Mass being celebrated at Orientum. Number five, this will surprise a lot of people. The traditional Latin Mass actually allows for more options for personal devotion when you pray at church. Uh, I know this is surprising. People attend the Latin Mass, but think about it like this: when you go to a um, Novus Ordo Mass and they start singing, everyone stand up, sing "Amazing Grace, How Sweet the Sound," or sing "Praise and Worship." Sounds like, what are you going to be doing? You're going to be doing praise and worship. You're going to be praise and worship style prayers. They're going to do Gregorian chant. Uh, meanwhile, however, in the traditional Latin Mass, um, there are numer numerous options for what you can do, what's considered appropriate when you go. Uh, typically, this you kneel when you pray, but beyond that, like um, 
you can say your private devotions like Rose, or you can have quiet on your breath. Extra permamius, forgive me, can't pronounce that. <laughs> not sure how to pronounce the word. Prayer, just praying your own words. You can do that at Mass because you're at the foot of Calvary, and that's perfectly appropriate. You can say the Rosary. You can and, uh, have devotions to Mother God. You can do any uh, all, all these legitimate devotions during Mass. You can follow along to the Mass. You can, and uh, in some places, like it is customary to like uh, sing the responses to the hymns of Gregor in Gregorian chant. Uh, so that's an option as well. Um, so there's a lot more, um, there are actually a lot more devotional options at the Church of Mass. Ironically, it's for Mass is supposed to be its original uniform, there's, it has more options than the more modern English Catholic Mass, modern Catholic Mass. Um, number four, relic devotion is a must. In other words, praying with dead body parts is mandatory at the traditional Latin Mass. <laughs> Uh, I'm not joking. So, like, uh, all these, uh, even if it's not in a church, and I've seen this done, because most usually go to Latin Mass, it's like at a community center. Uh, they'll have, like, a first-class relic of a saint, like a piece of their bones or body, sewn into, like, a cloth, and they'll stretch it on the ta on, on just, like, a kitchen table, which they'll dre then dress up as an altar. Uh, and I've seen them do it. It actually does look pretty good, pretty nice, like, an looks like an altar. It actually looks like an altar. Um... And uh, and they will kiss, um, uh, and they'll kiss, and they'll kiss the relics, and venerate the relics at various points. Priests will venerate those relics at various points in the mass, and and that's and that's actually reference to scripture, um, like um, like the Book of Revelation, or, or also known as the Book of the Apocalypse, where the saints are underneath the altar of God in heaven. Um, now I'm not, now to be fair. The Nova sort of modern Catholic churches do have altar stones in their churches. Uh, that, that's pretty typical. I'd be, I'd be very, very surprised to not. I've never seen a one in a church. When in a proper Catholic church, you know, modern one, I've never seen an, yet to see an altar that does not have an altar stone. That being said, uh, I have been to like outdoor masses where it's or or, uh, or, or in a or, or in a university chapels, I've been to Nova Scotia masses where they didn't, it's not there, we don't care, we'll just celebrate it without one anyway. Uh, while in the traditional Latin mass, doesn't matter, doesn't matter if it's, uh, if you're out in the boondocks or celebrating mass on the hood of a, of a vehicle and, as people are shooting at you, uh, you have that altar cloth, if it's at all possible. You have that, you have those relics there, if it's at all possible. Um, so number three, uh, they're missing feast, day, fast, feast days or miraculously fast days that date back to like the early church and the traditional Latin Mass that are no longer celebrated. Um, so like um, rogation days, which typically pray for weather that date, date from like the, I, believe, I think like the fourth century. Century, um, those were celebrated in the traditional Latin Mass. Those were, and are celebrated in the traditional Latin Mass. Not anymore. Um, uh, th those were to pray for good weather. Uh, and to pray against pandemics and stuff because, and I guess we don't do that anymore because, well, obviously we don't have pandemics anymore. <laughs> who needs who needs them? Um, so who needs them? Um, uh, also, Ember Days uh, were days set aside throughout the year uh, for prayer and fasting to pray for vocations for more Catholic priests and Holy Catholic priests at that. Uh, which I guess they did away with because I guess we have an overabundance of priests we don't need anymore. Um, so yeah, those are holidays that should still be very, very relevant right now. Modern Catholics aren't celebrating them, traditional Catholics are. Uh, number two, this is in light with like abuse crises in the Catholic Church. The priest at the traditional Latin Mass has to pray for forgiveness by himself. Just to him, then everyone prays for forgiveness. Uh, they have, so the prayer, I confess to Almighty God, the Confessor. First, the priest says that just himself. No one else, just him, and then people, will, and then the servers respond and pray for God to have mercy on him. Then the congregation says they can. Uh, then the servers or the congregation recite the say the confidior. Um, um, and, and then they, the congregation, or and the servers um, and representing the congregation say that prayer. Um, so the priests. So you have to have this division, of like priests are called to a higher calling than than just the random person in, in the pews. 
and more is expected of them, and so they get their own special prayers, which I think, to be honest, even good priests, they need those extra prayers. And it is worth, I think it's a good and healthy way of approaching it. Also, it's biblical, like in the book of, um, in, the, in the Old Testament, uh, priests, when they sinned, had their own sin offerings to offer, aside from everyone else. They had their own right uh, for offering sacrifice when they sinned, as opposed to, say, a prince, or a king, or uh, anyone else. Um, and of course, my number one reason for like the church of mass, kneeling on the tongue. I know right now with COVID world, people think, oh, this is gross and disgusting. Biblically though, it actually makes sense. Um, I remember, uh, seeing, going to the Novus Road and seeing people take me in the hand. I remember one kid who <sighs> went by the half host and turned around, chatted with their friend as she walked to the pew. I've seen, I found a host, Catholic host left on windowsills in Catholic churches. I absolutely get why you should do why they did kneeling why kneeling with the tongue should be a rule and has been a rule for centuries. Across numerous rites, by the way, I would point out of the Catholic Church. Um so yeah. So so the so but and so and also when kneeling on the tongue, I remember always whenever I saw people taking communion in the hand, I remember that story from the Bible when Dave was bringing the Ark of, Jer Ark of the Covenant into Jerusalem. Um and, and a guy so I took his hand and studied, put his hand in the ark and study it, struck down dead. Um, I always remembered that story, and it was like, it always made me uncomfortable to see it. Um, now, is there ever a case where the save, like, save host and desecration these days, could it be done? Sure. Um, sure, sure. But, like, even now, like, uh, there are other branches of the Catholic Church and other rites that still, even during this pandemic, do communion on the tongue, and they've actually found ways to, like, socially distanced. Um, so like in the Byzantine Rite, um, a lot of traditional Catholics love Eastern liturgies. Um, they have a like the skull and spoon. The host is in a child is in a leaven is made as they use leaven bread or the host put in the chalice, take it out, and I spoon feed it to the whole congregation. So you can still do communion in the tongues and be socially distanced at the same time. I'm not sure what code the codes of canon law pre Vatican II would say about options for that, but like, it's got to be better than, it's got to be better than, it's got to be better than the community hand and as far as the abuses I've seen, um, it's got to be better than that, than the abuses I've seen there. Um, with hosts left on windowsills, I know one person, woman who even found a host smooshed up in the hymnals. Um, I know, know another guy who found hosts in like ventilation shafts in churches. So it's really just horrifying. So yeah. So, so these are like, so, and then and for my bonus number, for my final, for my bonus one, for why I like the for the Latin Mass, there are actually references to the Bible in the Latin Mass that just ended up being there, that no one intended to do that, that just ended up happening, which I think is really major, such a huge testimony of to how, well, how the Latin Mass is really is in a certain sense authored by God Himself. So I remember at uh, the Latin. Church at Mass, the priest, uh, the, the servers help lift up the back of the chasuble. Uh, and this is like reference to like something practical in the early, in the medieval period. when uh, a lot of the vestments were very covered in gold and jewels and it was hard to move in them. Uh, I actually, I'm actually, it actually reminded me of a story of the, in the Bible when uh, Moses was praying and he had the staff of God praying for, for the people, but his arms grew weary. And when he let his arms down, people would, these arts were losing. So um, Aaron and her would, st so Aaron, Moses sat down and Aaron and her held, held up his hands to help him. And I, and that's not even intentionally put in there from what I understand. This is just happened by accident. You have this biblical reference there by accident, at least in human terms, by accident. Um, you just don't, and I found that you just don't get those unintentional biblical references when you have the Nova Sordo. Um, so, yeah, so yeah, so anyway, this is like 11, okay, actually 12 reasons for why, 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 say, why support the Trisha Lent Mass. Um, anyway, this is my Numerian Missal. This book is literally from the night dates from the 1950s. This copy dates from the 1950s. It's older than me. Uh, you can usually buy these online at a new you can buy newer ones at Angelus Press or you can look around your local used bookstore. Sometimes they have the have them for sale there. But it's super cheap. Right. Anyway.
Stay safe, everyone.